My name is Prithvi. Uh, it's great to be back here. Uh, if you see me under different circumstances, my name might be DJ MVI instead. Uh, MVI is a bit of an inside joke, uh, how that came up. Uh, so my talk is titled The Improbability of This Talk. So what exactly is so improbable about it? You see, there have been a lot of things that have happened in my life. Uh, some of these things have happened by chance. And I think some of these things are also the reason why I've been invited back here to give this talk. So I'll start by telling you probably the most important thing that has happened to me. It's this thing called the Science Research Program. It's a comprehensive nine month, year long research project actually that you get to do uh, in, at NUS under an NUS professor. And I did this in JC1. So this all started out when uh, my teacher just made an announcement to the class and said, there's this thing called Science Research Program. It's a really nice program. You get to do, you get to learn a lot of things out of it. I recommend you take it up. And I'm someone who's always been very interested in science and research. So I thought about it and it seemed like something really good. But it's a year long and it's in JC1. It's very hard to manage, don't you think? So I wasn't very keen on taking it up initially. So I went back home one day that day, and I was having a random dinner conversation with my parents, telling them what happened at school and so on. And I casually mentioned that there was this uh, this opportunity that had been presented to us. And I said that it's cool, but I don't think I'm going to take it because I don't think I can manage. And my sister looked at me a bit strangely and said, why not? Because she knows how interested I am in science and research. And here was a golden opportunity, and I was just throwing it away. So she's, I, I, I raised my concern about not having time, and she had, she had already graduated from JC by then. And she gave me some very interesting advice. It was something on the lines of, you will never have time for anything unless you make time for it. And something kind of just clicked in me at that point, and I, I then decided, okay, YOLO mentality, let me just see what, what happens if I take it. And so I did. So I signed up for it, I passed the entrance test. And I decided to do a research project on batteries, rechargeable batteries. Batteries have just been something that fascinated me as a kid uh, when I was experimenting with all my whatever random things I had around at home. It's just something that puzzled me since a kid, so I decided, okay, let me research, uh, do some research on these batteries. Fast forward a few more months later, I was testing out these batteries that I built, and I found something very, very, very strange. The batteries, in some sense, got better the more you use them. That's weird because if you look at most consumer electronics, like your phones, the first day you got your phone, the battery lasted really long. Two years later, it lasts, you'd be lucky to get half a day out of it, right? My batteries were the opposite. They got slightly better the more you use them. That's completely unexpected. Just fast forward a few more months, I was in JC2 by now, somehow hanging on to everything that was going on. And there was this science fair called the Singapore Science and Engineering Fair. This was in 2013. It's the largest national science fair. Uh, I signed up for it, I got into that. And bear in mind, I went for this science fair. There were two people from SAJC over there. All the other students over there were from the other schools. And all their teachers were there, all of the, uh, the other students were there, they were all rehearsing non-stop endlessly. And I just went there, I didn't even know where to put my poster up, I didn't know who was in charge. I was pretty lost, and I was really intimidated. Up till this point in my life, I was pretty much the definition of an average kid. So I went for this science fair and I just thought, okay, I'm just going to talk about what I did and how interesting my results are. That's exactly what I did. Turns out I won that science fair. It was something I've never ever dreamed of. But it didn't end there. I was also selected after that to represent Singapore at the International Science and Engineering Fair in Arizona and the US in the same year. That was pretty crazy. From being an average kid, suddenly all of a sudden, you know, representing the country. And it didn't end there. Once I was at the International Science Fair, I won, I won a couple of awards actually. Uh, one was from the American Chemical Society, they gave me the first prize. And overall, uh, in the category of chemistry, I placed second. Remember, I was just an average kid up until all of this happened. And if you we and there's a lot more things that happened after there's a lot more awards. Even the scholarship that I'm on right now came out of all of this. But if you think about where all of this started out, it was over a random dinner conversation I had with my sister. I wasn't even planning on taking this research project up. 
just so happened to have brought it up. So happened that my sister talked me through it. So happened that I changed my mind. And look at all the things that have happened. I think that's a very interesting thing that's happened to me by chance. And it goes on more. There's some other things that have happened. So I'm in NUS and I'm on the archery team. And I like this picture for a few reasons. Uh, firstly, I think it looks cool. Secondly, it hides a lot of my mistakes because it's taken from the back. And it looks cool at the same time. So I joined archery. I, I have a, do we have anyone who has any experience in archery here? Compound, reaper? No? OK. So neither have I. I just decided to join archery because I thought it was something fun. I like to find new things. So I joined archery, and it turns out it was a lot of fun. And a couple of months later, I developed a very interesting problem that is referred to as target panning. It's very, it's actually a psychological problem that quite a lot of archers face. So I'll try and explain to you what target panning is all about. So this is what a normal, you would expect an archery shot to be like. This is massively oversimplified, but you get the idea. So you raise your bow, you draw the string, you aim, and then you let go. Simple enough, right? But this is what target panning does to you. The keen amongst you might know this, the aiming has now been thrown out the window. And if you're trying to hit a target at some distance, that's kind of important, right? So target panic is its a psychological problem. Any attempt, and if you ever try and aim when you're at full draw, you'll instinctively release your string. It's a very strange feeling. It's, it's quite hard to explain because here I am, I'm holding the bow, I'm drawing the string back, it's my bow, I'm controlling everything, but I have no control over when I release the string. That's weird, don't you think? So I was rolling around in bed one day, like really annoyed with this problem, trying to think about what I was doing wrong. And I stumbled across a very, very powerful lesson out of all of this. Don't you think this is what chronic addiction feels like? I know this jumped really fast from like archery to addiction, but, but think about it. Most addicts know what they're doing is wrong, but they can't get themselves to stop what they're doing. That's exactly what I was feeling like. I tried so hard to have control over my own bow and when I released the string, but I simply couldn't. I just had no control. It's, it, it's, it's weird. It's like someone else was controlling me. I think that's a very powerful lesson for me because addiction is something that you, know, you can't just explain to people. So for me, I think having been through this experience and having some understanding of what it's like is a really powerful lesson. And there's a third thing that happened to me uh, by chance recently, or the string of chances. So I was walking past, well, walking, running actually, from one lecture to another lecture when I was at NUS uh, a couple of months ago. And I came across this poster. Does anybody recognize, you don't know who Martin Garrix is? Okay, great. If you don't know him, I strongly recommend you check him out because one of his top songs on YouTube just crossed a billion views like a few weeks ago, so it's probably, I think he's a pretty good producer. So I've always been interested in electronic dance music. Like I listen to it all the time, even when I'm studying. My friends think I'm crazy for that. And DJing is kind of something that goes with this, so it's something that I've always wanted to pick up. And so I walked past this poster, like by chance, I was just running off of my lecture, and I caught this poster in front of my eye. And the poster reads, I want to be like Martin Garrix. And I was like, yes, I want to be like Martin Garrix. Something I've been wanting to do for really long. So I signed up for this. And a few weeks into this DJing course, my hostel in NUS announced that they were having a graduation night. And they asked me to MC for it. I said, OK, sure, I don't mind. And I got the idea. Or what if I could DJ for this event too? So I just said, hey, I can DJ, you want me to DJ? I made it sound like, you know, I have a lot of experience I've done this before, but I, I didn't finish the, be the beginners, sorry, the beginners course. And that's how this happened. <laughs> so this picture is not a picture I really like. I'm not sure if you can see, but my expression is a bit, I look kind of confused. <laughs> Reason is, I was so, okay, I was very nervous, obviously. Yeah, I was playing for like 250 something people, and I hadn't finished the basic DJ course. So I had my headphones on and I was just from doing my mixing and so on and I took my headphones off and looked up and there were people like, you know, jumping to the music and I was shocked. My friend happened to have got this picture at that exact moment. That's why I like this picture a lot. And it looks cool, I think. <laughs> so 
this was of course by chance and there was some more things that happened i started telling all my friends about this that i can dj and that i want to dj at events and so on word started to spread and orientation camps are coming up in nus and actually right now a couple of friends have even asked me to dj for the orientation camps and some of them are quite prominent events i finished the beginners course by now so i have that level of confidence at least so i think that's quite a big thing for me to have started from walking past the poster coming all the way here. But my conclusion after all these things is not that I'm a lucky person. I mean, I think I've had my fair share of luck, but that's not the point. The, I want you to realize that this, that luck, blind luck, doesn't really get you places. Luck needs some kind of facilitation. You need to help it along, move it along before you really make it to something big. Like, let me give you some examples of in this context. So for my research project, sure, the batteries performed better than I expected, but it wasn't just like I threw together some chemicals and like, worked that way. I read through probably like 80, 90 research papers, most of which I understood like a few sentences here and there. And I spent a lot of time on that. Every day after school, first thing I'd do, School ends at five, go to the labs, stay at the lab at NUS till 10, go back home, have my dinner at like some ungodly hour, and then stay up till three or four doing work, wake up at six for school the next day. That was pretty much my life in JC1 and half of JC2. I tried very hard. And for archery, yes, it was a very, very unexpected lesson I think I had from that, but it only happened because I wanted to try something new and then I took the, took the opportunity to try something new and I signed up for a very interesting sport. And that's how all this happened. And for DJing, of course, I randomly walked past the poster, but after that, I started to let people know that I had the skill and that I wanted to DJ at events. And that's how all these things and the rest of the things happened. So blind luck isn't really going to get you to places. It's what you do with the small opportunities that you have to push them along to make them into something bigger. And there's another interesting or important lesson, is that I could have never predicted any of the things that came out of what of all these things that I pursued. I just took them up and, well, sort of went along the path and solved uh, and got lucky with what happened. And I think that's where the value of taking chances lies because you can't be sure of what's going to happen. You just need to try your best and hope that it gets you somewhere. And that's where the value of taking chances lies. Thank you.